They can all measure the current. Yes, the absolute value of the current draw, right? But they cannot give you the capacity to view the waveform. And in certain applications, usually motor-driven applications, especially when it comes to automotive application, um, or even in industrial capacity, I suppose, if you're talking about hydraulic pumps, pneumatic uh, pumps, um, compressors, you know, uh, motor-driven equipment, it'd be nice if you can actually see the waveform because it can tell you a lot about the... Um, the state of health of the uh, of the actual machine that you're actually considering right and for that typically you're going to need um, a scope of some sort right so you don't need a fancy scope you can uh, in order to, to view the waveform you're going to need a scope of some sort or a graphing meter at least is an option uh, there's lots of old school graphing meters out there still that are great tools uh, I'm a big fan of the old school vantage still great tool um, but again, no, everybody's going to have this. These are affordable. It gives you the option to actually view the waveform. However, oscilloscopes by, na by their nature, um, give you an X, Y plot. Obviously it give you a graphic, a graphical, uh, appreciation of what's going on inside the circuit, but it's voltage and time based. The operative word being voltage, right? Scopes do not directly measure amperage, right? Um, Everybody or most people know that with a very reasonable cost, I think these are what these are, eight bucks Canadian or something these days. I don't know. Let's call a hundred bucks all in shipping and stuff. This is a this is a really uh, viable option, um, quite cost effective option to actually uh, be able to actually use your clamp on ammeter and view the current waveform, not the voltage waveform, but the current waveform. Uh, via your scope of course right so this all this is doing is basically changing it to a voltage if you're lucky enough to have a good rig um, the software will actually do the conversion for you and you can directly read the current right but even if it doesn't do that um, you can still get an appreciation for the waveform um, being displayed even if it doesn't give you the direct uh, current conversion so what you can still garner a great deal of information by looking at the waveform itself but I don't know. I'd imagine when I when I first got in a buying oscilloscopes not too long ago, I'm no an expert by any stretch. I'm an expert of nothing, right? I'm the first one to uh, disclose that fully, boys. But when I bought this, I think it was pretty typical, right? So you're you're struggling to afford your tools, you know, even reasonably cheap tools. You know, everybody works within the constraints in their budget. I'm no uh, broke. I'm no destitute, but I'm no rich either. So you know, you try and work within the constraints that are placed upon you. That would be different for everybody. But most guys, you know, you, you get it piece by piece, right? And this is not likely to be one of the tools that you first buy, right? So, can you just use a basic oscilloscope and actually see a current waveform? Well, the last time I checked, uh, voltage and current are kind of inextricably linked via the various formulas we all are well aware of. Um, so the answer is yes. So we can take this logic, right? Which is go across the fuse and look at the voltage drop. Well, why can't we apply that same thinking and look at the voltage drop in a graphical format via an oscilloscope and get a look at the current waveform? Let's see if that's viable. Let's see if that's an option. So, I'm not one for taking credit for anything that is not my concept or my original idea, boys. I mean, how many original ideas are there in the universe these days? I don't know, but I don't imagine there's that many. I first heard of this when I watched a video by a fella the name of, um, uh, I think his channel name is The Car Whisperer. I, I don't subscribe to his channel or anything. I don't know much about him, but I watched his one video that he done on current waveforms because it was I found it very interesting. And he mentioned in passing the notion of checking voltage drop in order to to see the uh, the waveform, which is essentially the current draw. So credit where credit's due. Um, the car whisperer um, seems like a really good channel. I I I, I can't. Um, um, Put out an explicit endorsement of his channel, boys, because I've only seen the one video. But if his one video I watched is anything like the the quality of the content that he does put out, it might be worth checking out. So I thank the Car Whisperer for uh, not inventing this concept, but for bringing it into my stream of consciousness at the moment. And uh, so let's let's take this a wee bit further and see if we can uh, um, exploit this notion 
um, to see the current. We're not going to be able to measure the value, right? Not without some uh, mathematics uh, gymnastics that we can do without, but we can certainly see the waveform, the current waveform minus this. So I'm at my Grand Vitari here, boys. I'm going to be inside the electrical distribution box. Uh, I think it will suffice to actually see the uh, the fuel pump in operation, which will be the uh, fuel injection 20 amp fuse. I'm pretty certain. I've not looked at any schematics, but I'm pretty certain the pump will be driven off of that. Uh, there'll also be other items driven off of it, injectors and whatnot, I'm sure. But um, because we're just going to sit in a static state in my garage here, um, none of those items should be running. We should be able to see the fuel pump prime uh, basically in isolation. Okay, so uh, I just want you guys to appreciate again where I am and what we're actually doing here because I understand guys that there might be a few guys who watch this video or that are new to the concept of actually measuring the voltage drop in order to correlate it with the current draw, right? That, that'll be new to some people, so bear with me if I'm kind of tediously drawing this out. So what I'm doing effectively in the uh, fuse box itself is, uh, I hope you can see what I'm doing here, boys. I'm actually going across the two contacts on the fuse, right? So again, all, I'm, all I've done is I've got my, my probe set up. I don't have the standard ground clip because I'm going across, I'm looking for a voltage drop going across the two, uh, the, uh, the two contacts of the, the two test points on the fuse itself. So I'm simply going across the fuse inside the box here. I can't show you two different camera angles at once. My production is nowhere near that sophisticated. Uh, so I'm just gonna uh, cut back. Uh, I'll cut back to the shot. I've got the uh, scope set up. I'll, I will review the settings after. I've got it set up for a one shot so it will capture the, uh, the current draw. You'll see the inrush draw, uh, the inrush current of the pump. And uh, we can uh, we can take we can zoom in and take a close look. Our our ability to look at things in time is very limited because there's effectively no memory buffer on the uh, handtech scope. Right? That's going to be my setup at the uh, as far as my probes are concerned at the distribution box and the fuse. And uh, we'll now cut you to the uh, scope so you can see the uh, um, the current trace. So all we're going to do is my son's in the car. He can turn the key and we'll get pump prime and we'll take a look at that. So you, just so you can appreciate the parameters that I actually had it set up for, uh, 20 millivolts uh, per division. Uh, obviously it's such a small, uh, uh, such a small scale uh, on the voltage because um, we're only measuring the voltage drop across the fuse, appreciate. And the, uh, t the time base was actually set for uh, 20 milliseconds. Uh, so again, 2020. Uh, that's usually my uh, default settings on the uh, on the scope when I'm ever I'm viewing something I don't really know what I'm looking at. However, it's usually 20 volts, no 20 millivolts, of course, right? In this case, it's millivolts because we're just looking at a very minuscule uh, voltage drop across the fuse. So as you can see here, boys, <clears throat> maybe I'll uh, I'll put a link up here somewhere in the yeah, somewhere on the screen. Uh, to uh, a video I've done where I actually did measure um, uh, with a current clamp um, the uh, the draw of uh, the fuel pump, the current draw, but it looks very, very much like this. And again, boys, appreciate that we did not have um, we did not have a current clamp. This is strictly a voltage drop measurement. So you can see here, this is uh, where my son actually turned the key, and. Um, A bit too dark for our own good here i think uh this is where my son actually turned the key and you can see that the pump actually primes now we're on a very uh tight time scale here boys so it actually is cropped up you don't see the drop out from the pump but you would um if it was on a different scale um i don't think i can change it let me see here yeah there we go in fact there is right there so that's the two second prime uh from the pump you can see the inrush of the current and uh, of course, as the pump actually speeds up, uh, it generates uh, some back uh, EMF. That's what's, of course, regulating the speed of the pump for the most part because uh, a static pump, the windings will pretty much read, um, well, it's not going to read uh, uh, dead short, obviously, because the windings are going to, and the wiring will have some resistance, but um, pretty close to zero ohms, let's call it, right? Effectively, uh, there's really no resistance. So until the pump actually is in motion and generating a back EMF, uh, there's no regulation on the current per se, so it's, it's, you can see effectively a uh, uh, spike straight up with respect to time. 
and then as the pump actually starts, the, the inertia is overcome on the pump. As the pump actually starts to speed up, the pump is regulated down to this level of current flow here. Now, what is the current flow? I don't know, right? In this particular setup, we, we can't actually quantify it. That's not the point to this. The point to this is, does, it, does the actual waveform look to be reasonable? And to me, this certainly looks reasonable, right? Apart from this little anomaly here, I can't explain that, but hey, there's lots of things in the universe I can't explain. <clears throat> so let me just, that was the wrong, I wanted to change the, the time here, boys. I always manage to go the wrong direction somehow. So here, let's uh, effectively zoom out or zoom in in time. And here you can actually see, that's maybe a little bit too close now. Well, I guess that's as good as we're going to get it because we don't have any ability to actually slow the waveform. The Hantec uh, uh, 1008 Charlie is pretty basic, but um, we can get the idea here, right? So you can see as the inrush of current actually drops down that we actually have a very uniform pattern actually on the, uh, the commutator. Uh, what we're effectively looking at here is the commutator segments within the pump itself. And you can see we actually have a very uniform pattern, right? So uh, I'm really happy with that because, uh, again, this is not a um, this is not uh, a current uh, waveform, boys. This is a voltage drop waveform, which is um, basically we're extrapolating the current draw. Is uh, is what I'm trying to say. I hope I've made that point throughout the uh, video. Um, I know I'm kind of dragging this out, but this is this is to me very interesting. I didn't I didn't actually expect the waveform to be this uh, detailed, and it is really, really very similar to a waveform that you would actually capture with your current clamp. Perhaps that shouldn't be surprising, uh, because of course current and voltage are, as we all know, inextric inextricably linked in the circuit. So um, there is a way of taking a look at your current draw um, with the current clamp. I'm pleased with that. Thanks again, uh, and full credit to uh, the Car Whisperer. Um, he mentioned this concept in one of his videos briefly. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can actually, uh, I'll, I'll put a link to the video. It's, it's well worth a watch. And uh, this is what he's basically getting at uh, when he mentions it just briefly in the video. I think it's like a 20, 25 minute video. He mentions it for, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe 20 or 30 seconds in the video, but this is what he's actually talking about. Um, and uh, I'll leave it at that. I hope that makes some sense, boys. If I earned your uh, your uh, thumbs up or your subscription, thank you very much. Uh, there's been lots of new subscribers lately. Greatly appreciated. Thank you very much to uh, to Igor um, and uh, his channel, Car Exposed, for uh, actually supporting one of the videos I had posted recently, Cars Exposed, and uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, Igor is, in fact, a true gentleman. If you don't know him, go and check out his channel as well. And I'm not trying to sell anybody on anything, boys. The purpose of this video is just to, uh, to show you the capacity of a voltage drop check with respect to looking at uh, current waveforms. That's that, boys. Cheers.